All right. Welcome, everybody. We still have a few people logging in, so we're going to give people a minute or two, but we're just going to go over some housekeeping as we start. Um, I'm Hope Wendell from the SUNY Coil Center. And before I introduce our speakers, which we're so excited about, everybody show a little love and your emojis for our speakers. Yay. Um, I just want to cover a few housekeeping topics. Um, the webinar is going to be recorded and we will send handouts and resources in a follow-up email to all who registered for today. Please make sure you mute your mic when you're not speaking. Feel free. We would love to hear your thoughts in the chat. So please use the chat for comments and questions. And the last 15 minutes will be for audience um, participation. If you think of a question for a speaker at any point, please put it in the chat and we'll either share it right away or we'll hold it for the discussion part. Um, again, my name's Hope Windle from the SUNY Coil Center and it's my honor to welcome you here today. And in the SUNY Coil community tradition, every month we present a webinar for the community on specific topics connected to our Coil Idea Hub groups. And these topics include pedagogy, culture, language, and assessment. And today, as you all know, the SUNY Coil Center and FIU, which is Florida International University, Coil are joining forces for a um, whole series of seminars, webinars. And this is our kickoff. And who should we do this better but with our students, who are the people that we care about the most? I mean, we care about everybody, but we're really happy to be here for and with the students today. And um, I just want to say that we all really see that COIL Virtual Exchange is a pivotal opportunity and place for students, a place where doors open to worlds unimagined, a place where the circumference of one's life expands from one's town to one's country, to the state and country of your teammates, potentially located in a different part of the world. This is the point where students, you, our wonderful panelists, come together, connect, see parts of yourselves reflected in others, where others become teammates and no longer other. These are experiences that shape all of us, all of us. These are the experiences where we no longer are ticking the boxes of obligation, but we're seeing the possibilities to thrive and grow beyond our wildest dreams. So we are really happy to be here and let's welcome our um, our question people, Gabrielle Mendez, who is the assistant director at FIU COIL. And um, the, she thanks for the new opportunities COIL Virtual Exchange has opened in the working world to perform these activities in Monterrey, Mexico. Gabby holds a master's in information technology management and has worked in different aspects of online education, such as course design, technology implementation, faculty training, and teaching both at undergrad and graduate level. And are some of your students part of the panel, Gabby? Ah, yes, nice. we have two of my students here. Nice, I love it. Abigail Bryant, can you raise your hand, Abigail? Um, yeah, the emoji that, Reaction, okay, is the director of EOP Student Success at SUNY Administration, the Educational Opportunity Program, also known as EOP, is designed to provide access and opportunity for students from historically disadvantaged backgrounds. 
And that's for all 64 campuses throughout the State University of New York. So yay. At this time, I'm going to hand over the floor to Gabby Mendez, who's going to start the presentation. Gabby, it's all yours. Thank you. So let's start sharing our agenda. OK. Uh, but before we introduce your, uh, our panelists, uh, um, we also want to share that uh, we will be di dividing this panel in three main sections. The one, the first one um, is about the impact on international learning, how COVID has impact uh, on the international learning. And also the second section will be focused on how COIL virtual exchange uh, has helped to build uh, skills for the 21st century workplace. And then we will move to the third and last section where we will talk about the impact of COIL virtual exchange on engaging in social change. After this, we will have time for um, questions from the, answer, the, the audience, but also we have prepared a Padlet where you can add some of your thoughts there for each of the questions, or you can add more questions to it. So the Padlet looks like this. We have the three main sections here, and then you can scroll down. You will find the, the, the answer that we will be asking our students. You can add comments to each of this one, or you can add more questions here, or if you have anything else you think is will be helpful for this uh, panel, if you want to share more stuff regarding the topic that we are talking about and we'll help the community with that, that will be great. So before Abby help us to uh, introduce our panelists, we would love to start let me stop sharing my screen. So we would love to start this session by sharing with you that also the language used for this session will be English. We acknowledge and promote linguistic diversity. We recognize the effort implied when communicating in a foreign language. And we would like to encourage our panelists and participants to speak from your heart and feel free to include words and expressions for your mother tongue to enrich your ideas. Let's not forget that what we say is more important than how we say it. Antes de presentar a nuestros panelistas, nos encantaría comenzar esta sesión compartiendo con ustedes que aunque el idioma utilizado para esta sesión será el inglés, reconocemos y promovemos la diversidad lingüística. Reconocemos el esfuerzo que implica comunicarse en un idioma extranjero y nos gustaría animar a los panelistas y participantes a hablar desde el corazón y sentirse libres para incluir palabras y expresiones de su lengua materna para enriquecer sus ideas. No olvidemos que lo que decimos es mucho más importante que cómo lo decimos. So, let's start. Awesome. Thank you, Gabby. Um, and if you look at the chat, there is a lot of thank yous for acknowledging language here. Um, I am going to introduce all of the panelists um, very briefly, and then we'll go right into the questions. So our first panelist is Maya, and she is joining us from Brazil. Um, remember, panelists use the raise hand feature so that the audience can find you. Great. Next, we have Lucas, who is also joining us from Brazil. Great. Then we have Edward, who is joining us from Old Westbury at, in New York. And we have Avery, who is also joining us from Old Westbury in New York. Hi. Hola. Uh, we also have Veronica, who is joining us from Venezuela. Yay. Uh, Maria, who is joining us from Venezuela. Hi, Maria. Uh, we have Susana, who is joining us from Mexico. Woohoo! And we have Viviana, who is also joining us from Mexico. Yay. And we, 
Arya, who is joining us from FIU, Florida, United States. Woohoo! And we have Nicole, who is also joining us from FIU in Florida, United States. Yay! Welcome, everyone. We are super excited to start having this conversation and discussion. Um, one of the best ways for us to internalize and reflect on our experiences is to talk. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this discussion with you all. Um, and I will pass it back over to Gabriella to ask the first question. Thank you, Abby. So for this question, we uh, thought that would be great if we can hear from all the students that uh, has joined us today. And we would like to hear a little bit about your core virtual exchange experience. How was it and if there uh, were any challenges that you faced at the time. So maybe we can start with Nikki that I have first in the screen and we have very short, uh, one minute. Thank you. Hello everyone, um, I'm Nikki. I um, thank you for letting me be here by the way and um, share my experience. So for me, I, um, I got really excited to sign up for the COIL course because I do biology education research in my PhD. And um, I'm in the biological sciences program here at FIU, but for me, getting to take a class that um, allowed me to speak with professors who are biologists and ecologists, who also appreciate getting to speak about social issues um, and social justice topics in science, and um, have a specific course relating those topics to how important it, it connects ecological diversity and conservation management um, was really just a, a wonderful thing um, on top of getting to be able to collaborate with other students. Um, though it didn't come without challenges, I think that sometimes Zoom can be slightly difficult, but I wouldn't have gotten this experience without that. So thank you. Good. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah. If you see a whole screen, you will see that she has a timing, timer there, so you can have a better sense of, of your time, okay? Aria, go ahead. I'm Aria, I'm from FIU, and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. For me, COIL, to be honest, is very different from Nicole's experience because I didn't know it was part of the COIL program until the first meeting of our class. So, and I saw people from Mexico, I was like, which class am I into? Then I checked back and I found out, okay, we had this international collaboration. So I was more than happy to, you know, to find more about Mexico. It's, it's about the teamwork that I was able to enjoy there. Uh, we had a great time, even though we faced a really hard uh, time with the language issues because like four of my teammates were speaking Spanish and I was the only person with English. Google Translate literally helped me a lot, but I really loved the, the, the hardship that we went through because that had a great fun. At the same time, it was very informative to know much more about Mexico and all. Um, thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Maria Ferrao. Hello everyone, my name is Maria. Um, this process was also very like good for me, not only because we were like coming from a pandemic kind of like uh, learning process, but also because I feel like as students, we kind of only center in our problems and what we are going through and we think that we're alone but we uh, shared experiences with people that were in New York and we found more similar similarities with those people than uh, differences. And it was very like good to feel, uh, you know, a companion and, and to feel like we were in it together. And even though, yes, there were challenges and sometimes we got frustrated, the, the wins that we got were more than worth it. So it was a very good experience and it, honestly opened our eyes and it was a great opportunity. Nice. Thank you, Maria. Um, Vero. Okay, hi everyone. Um, for me, the COIL experience was amazing. I really enjoy being able to talk to other students from New York because I love New York City um, and the state as well. Um, but it was great because I got to learn and practice my English and they also learned uh, a few words in Spanish and we enjoyed really the exchange we had 
We also face a, a few challenges uh, with the electricity and the internet connection. Um, but we found out, like Maria said, it was not only us that we faced that problem, but them as well. So we felt a little less lonely <laughs> in those problems that we have living here in Venezuela. Thank you, Vero. Let's go with uh, Lucas. I think Lucas is there. Hi, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, my name is Lucas. I am 22, 22 years old and I study biological science at Universidade Federal Fluminense. I had the opportunity to participate in COIL when I was a student in English class at Uli. Uh, university program. Well, uh, the experience was amazing and I recommend everyone to participate. It was very interesting to have contact with so many different people and from different realities than mine. The, um, the challenge I faced were with myself because being among many unknown people makes me a little insecure in addiction to speaking in English, which, which is not my native language. But, but everything got easier after the first meeting, which is when I realized that it would not be as difficult as I thought before. And reversing what I said before, I recommend Sorry, I recommend that everyone participate. Sorry, my connection is uh, no problem, very Lucas. bad. No problem, Lucas. And we appreciate you are doing this effort to speak in English. We know that is uh, kind of difficult for some of us. So thank you for sharing. And we also have from Brazil, uh, Maya. I think Maria Yasmin, are you here? Hi. Hi, um, I am a Jesus woman um, from a third world country uh, and I'm studying of anthropology. My name is Maria Esmin, also known as Maya. Uh, the COIL experience uh, was very interesting. Uh, I was able to express my opinions and what girls being who I am. Uh, likewise, I met different people and participated fitting in debates on important topics. There were no challenges, just uh, butterflies in my stomach <laughs> on the first date. This is something entirely new to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Happy to have you here. So let's go now with Susie. Sorry, I couldn't turn on my microphone. Well, my name is Susie. And when I had my call experience, I was really excited and nervous. I was excited because before this course, I didn't knew that you could have international experiences in your home. And I really appreciated what COIL is doing because we live in the 21st century. We have technology that allow us to do this. Uh, some of the challenges that I had was that one of our teammates didn't have, wasn't communicating with us, but then we discovered that it was because he was, uh, he was sick, he had COVID. And then after that, like we had a good communication, he did his work and everything was good. So yeah, I really enjoy my whole experience. Thank you, Susie. What about you, Vivi? Well, hello everyone, my name is Vivi. Thank you for inviting me into this panel. I'm, um, I took the Global Classroom class with Susie and our teacher, we had the honor that it was Gabi. So it was really a fun class and I was really excited because Susie and I are studying educational innovation. And over the years, we've noticed that the main thing that is needed for the future in education is understanding diversity. And I think this is a really good step towards it. 
And one of the challenges I think we face is that we as students, I saw it that it was mentioned in the chat, we are pretty busy. So making the time and effort to uh, checking out our schedules, it was a really difficult thing to do, but once we do it, it was really fun and it was like we were really connected and we loved it. Thank you, Bibi. Let's go now with Avery. Hi, my name is Avery. Um, the COIL experience allowed me to become... We can hear you, Avery. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry about that. The COIL experience allowed me to become more knowledgeable about other countries, specifically Venezuela, and that um, it really opened my eyes to what students in other countries face every day, like the challenges they face. And I got to talk with someone who, while I didn't speak, I don't speak Spanish, but because one of um, my partners is bilingual, that really opened up the experience to us. It was also a chance for me to try to learn to speak Spanish too. And I got to hear from our partner in Venezuela about her experience in Venezuela, I guess, what it's like over there, the challenges she's facing, the social issues going on. And we related that to the issues we have in America. Thank you, I agree for sharing. And Eddie, Hi, hello, my name is uh, Eddie. Hopefully everyone's doing good. Um, I agree with Avery because I was his partner for the COIL program thing. And um, sometimes during the uh, programs, the meetings wouldn't work out because the Zooms meeting, like they, they weren't, it wasn't a good connection or we weren't on the same page when it came to doing the meetings. But I was the only person in my group who would like, who speaks Spanish because I'm from El Salvador. so nobody else in my group would speak Spanish except me so I'd be the only person talking to the Venezuelan partner that we had so but it was a really nice uh, experience and uh, I really liked it and I got to gain more knowledge from what's happening in Venezuela and give the other person in Venezuela knowledge about what's happening in the U.S. and it was a really nice thing to do. Thank you Eddie. Thank you all for sharing um, about your experience with your COIL virtual exchange uh, project. It's really helpful for us uh, listening and different perspectives. So let's continue with the questions. Abby? Yeah, yeah so I'm actually gonna pick on Eddie again for this first question, and then you can kick us off with this one. Um, our question is, what's the one thing you have learned in this process that you didn't know before? Um. Okay, so in this, for the COIL program, I didn't really know that about the situation in Venezuela, because like there's a lot of political issues going on over there. And I wasn't very like, I was pretty ignorant on what was happening over there. And like hearing what my partner in Venezuela had to say about the issues over there made me feel really fortunate to have what I have over here. And um, it was like really nice. It was nice to connect with that person and understand every single thing and even my professor tried to uh make everything work out as best as possible but obviously we came through with a lot of problems but you know even now I still I still had a uh, contact with a partner in Venezuela we ended up being good friends and stuff like that and even my uh other partners in the room with me too so but um it was a really nice experience and I'm glad that I could be a part of it. And I'm in the EOP program along with uh, Avery. So we had to go through this five week um, program, summer program thing where we had to speak with them and it was part of the process. But no, yeah, it was really nice to just sit and just speak like however we wanted to, like I would ask them questions about who their favorite musician is, what they like doing in Venezuela my favorite musicians and stuff like that. And I told them about how my Spanish isn't the strongest and stuff. And even my own mother tells me that because she was born in El Salvador and came here and I was born here. But um, no, they understood everything I was saying and it was such a great experience for all the parties involved. 
Thank you, Eddie. Um, same question with uh, Maya, if you can jump in. Uh, what's the one thing you learned in this process that you didn't know before? Uh, everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Um, uh, I feel that I haven't improved my, my way of communicating and interacting in English. Also, that's it. Thank okay. you. Um, Vero, Veronica? Yeah, I okay, guess so I wanted to comment on this particular question because as Eddie said, I live in Venezuela, I'm Venezuelan, and I believe that we as youth, as young people didn't have a voice and our COIL experience was based on this project about our voices as students, as young people who lives here. And then when we had this co the COIL exchange and we start talking to these students from New York and we start sharing our project, our thoughts on this issue that we had about expressing ourselves. Um, they told us that they felt the same way, even though they live in a country that's more developed than ours, and they have many laws that help them to express themselves freely. And that's something that we don't have here <laughs> at the moment, right? Because we are scared of the government that we have, or so many other issues that surround this topic, but I felt less lonely. Um, listening to them, hearing to their experience as well, and know that we can help each other to overcome these things that do not only happen in my country, but happen in the globe as well. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Gabby? Yeah, the next question, question that we have is, why will students need a COIL virtual exchange experience in their programs. So Nikki, would you like to answer this? Yeah. Um, I think for me, again, as a, a biology education researcher, um, we often think about the importance of individual perspective and understanding others' lens in which they see and understand the natural world. And the COIL course allowed for an opportunity to collaborate across countries with our students and also challenge ourselves out of our dominant language um, and dominant mindset, as well, especially me coming from the US um, from a white Western lens. Um, so sometimes we um, can get so hyper-focused as PhD and master's students on our individual realms that allowing ourselves to work together with others in a messy and often very clunky atmosphere. <laughs> um, but it allowed us to learn patience and understanding that is only learned in practice. Um, for example, when we were um, writing our like proposal um, for class, we were, it was specifically about like fish diversity and fishery diversity and community management in Colombia. And um, I was coming from my Western lens uh, into this project, thinking about these communities and and getting to collaborate and work with people from other countries um, who felt closer to the country that we were like proposing our research on. Um, it allows us to like bring for me to challenge my own perspective um, and to to think about myself in relation to others um, as well and challenge my own privileges. So. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing. So the, the same question will be uh, for Lucas. Why do you think students need a COIL-B experience in their programs? Well, uh, in my view, this goal is uh, beyond the opportunity to communicate in English with other people. Uh, of course, this is an important aspect and I have taken advantage of it myself, but I think it was much more uh, meaningful to have the chance to share thoughts and to hear about the people's stories 
uh, their experience to realize how cultural aspects differ more than we can imagine uh, and discuss about some issues, uh, mainly social issues. It was very uh, curious to think about how some thoughts are similar and other, other are different, which leads us to, to reflect on our own realities as people. I, lear I learned it a lot in my university program, but Caio brought, uh, sorry, brought a plus in my experience. Great. We are seeing some uh, messages in the chat that your thoughts and your ideas are amazing. So let's continue with this question. And what are your thoughts, Aria, about this? So adding on to what Nicole said, it will be a great opportunity to learn what patience is in there. Because we can't wait in a traffic lane for a long time. We're like, I want to get there. So I, the, one of the other things that I learned from this COVID program is the teamwork. So it's like teamwork in the extreme level because we are from different countries. We don't know like the language there. For us, we did face a lot of problems with the language. Um, as I told, the, the Google Translator was very useful. We also had a WhatsApp chat. By the end of the class, like I was able to learn a little bit of Spanish. I mean, a little bit of Spanish means just one word. It was just ja, 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 because they would always put this word. I was like, okay, now I understand what ja, ja, ja means. And um, the, the teamwork was extremely because we were able to use other technologies to make sure that everyone understand what we are saying. Uh, even, though, even though like most of it was during the summertime. So most of us like work full time. They will come like it's 10 p.m. We are still working. And I felt so bad. And another good thing is that to, for me, what I had heard about Mexico is probably a really dark side because that's what I have been hearing from the media. But when I talked to them, I was able to know what Mexico really is. And it's not that dark, dangerous country that we are knowing from the media. There's like, of course, a good side like any other country, even though they face some a good phase that we should know that was the best thing for me so whenever i'm like i'm going to travel to mexico i'll be like testing my teammates i still have contact with them and uh, especially when you're working from an engineering film you really need a lot of contacts uh teamwork so right after the call i was like okay the teamwork point in my resume that's true i have a great teamwork even though we did face a lot of conflicts in our team we were able to solve that uh in a very fun manner to be honest uh, we had a project about the spaghetti bridge and I'm a freshman, but most of them are sophomores. So they had a great knowledge of it, and they were like teaching me what engineering really is. It was very funny for me. And I think that's like the best thing about it. It's a teamwork at the extreme level. I'm loving all this, the answers and the conversation. Yeah. Um, some, yeah, it's coming from so many different perspectives, which I think is makes this conversation so robust. Um, and like someone said in the chat, it's like multiple dissertations in, in one conversation here. <laughs> um, so we'll move on to the next question. And that is, from your point of view, why should fa faculty facilitate COIL virtual exchange for their students? So we'll ask um, Vivi if you can start with this one. Yes, thank you. Well, from my personal experience and what I have seen and heard, when um, an institution gives this space, it gives them a voice, just like Vero said. I think that was really beautiful. It gives you a secure space so you can express yourself and you can collaborate with someone else. And that really empowers you and makes you the protagonist of your own education. And that's really important in your learning process. And that really immerses you in what you're studying and motivates you to keep going. So I think it's it's a really important thing that it facilitates you and plus it gives you the advantages of having your peers with you on your own space in your own country with someone mentoring you just like your teachers and giving you all these tools and technology so you everything goes smoother. So, yes. Thank you. I see a hand raised. Avery, did you want to jump on that one? Yeah, I wanted to jump on that. Awesome. So I'd like to add on to what Vivi said. Like Vivi just said about um, COIL allowing you to take control of like your own education. 
when the faculty facilitates it for you, the faculty and the students both get to learn together from each other, from other students and other faculty in other countries. And they get to share those experiences they've had with each other. And um, it, it really allows, I guess, students to just through working together, it allows them to create a sense of camaraderie, but also a sense of understanding and of their own education, like learning through learning more about like the world, they're able to know more about themselves and what they would want to do. Thank you, Avery. And I guess the last person I would like to ask this question to is Maria. Do you have anything to add um, on why should faculty facilitate COIL for their students? Yeah, I think what my two other mates told is very important, not only because you get to learn from other people, but you also learn a lot about yourself. The way you interact with these people, it's going to teach you a lot about who you are, what you want for your future, how your teamwork is, and how well you can cope with challenges. Mostly because right now there's also like a lot of job opportunities that are remotely. And these things teach you not only on your like student experience, but also when you go out to the to the working space, you're going to have all these experiences that are going to make you a better like uh you know partner yeah it's going to make you a better teammate and also it opens a lot of doors like a lot of opportunities because as we have said we are still in contact with other teammates and we are still making projects and we are still like, like trying to learn from each other after my cold experience i I'm now a volunteer on a foundation that also helps with like multicultural exchange. And I am able right now to have experiences with like people from Indonesia. And a lot of what I learned from COIL, it's what's helping me develop that connection with others. And that empathy that you get from the COIL experience is also gonna be like so important for that social change that we all want to see for like future projects that we want to do because once you learn from other people and once you learn like eddie said once you learn from like what other people are facing and you want to be part of that change that's where everything starts this is like a, a little spark that you are offering your students that could grow so much beyond you just have to give that little spark and the rest is like work from us you know it takes our hand and our work and it could grow into something a lot bigger and a lot better like this little webinars you know thank you maria and i think this is a great connection for the next section where we talk about building skills for the 21st century workplace. And also, if you would like to add to this question, um, how has your Colby experience led you to pursue a new direction or career in something related to COIL? Yeah, uh, like I was talking, like uh, after this experience, I learned that I didn't want it to stop there. I didn't want it, this school experience to be my last one. And I didn't want this uh, cultural exchange to be the last one that I had. I learned that from me, from myself, knowing who I was now being, I wanted to have these exchanges with other people in order to change myself, to change uh, things that I am not like, I, I don't agree with in my country, in other people's cultures. So this helped me a lot, not only to know myself, but to also see that apart from like, you know, my bachelor degree, I want to go into different areas that also involve this COIL experience and this uh, social exchange and cultural exchange. So it's like I said, this was the little spark that I needed for me to know that this is not the last time that I want to have or be part of this kind of projects. So I think that was very important for me. Thank you, Maria. I think our hearts right now are like 
bigger than when we started. So Vivi, can you share about this question? Yes, of course. Well, after having the COIL experience, I was given the opportunity to apply to an internship program in the global classroom department at my institution. And also there is one of my mentors in here. So shout out to Jeez and Monse. And, and it has really been a great experience learning the behind the scenes of all this process. And before I had this opportunity, I was actually really stubborn about studying neuroscience in my master's. And I was like only focusing on that. And I only want that. And all my investigation was towards that. And after having this experience and then seeing the behind the scenes, something inside of me was like, no, like you have to change your perspective, uh, look at the big picture. And so I decided to change completely uh, my decision for my master's. And I'm currently enrolled for next year studying educational leadership with a concentration in global and comparative education because I see the value in it. And I really think it's, as I mentioned before, it's the next step of education towards reaching our global goals. So thank you. <laughs> also, I think Susie wanted to add to this. Well, Vivi and I are studying the same thing. We are studying educational innovation. And I feel like I had the same experience I, as Vivi, like before the course that we had, I was really focused in uh, neuroscience research. But I remember that at the end of the course, I told my teachers, Gabby included, that I really like opened my perspective and wanted to have like this opportunity to, I don't know, know more about coal and these international virtual experiences. And I'm also a, an intern in the Global Classroom Program. And I'm really like grateful of all the work that our teachers uh, do to make this collaboration happen because as a student, you don't see all the work that is behind, like um, planning the, the uh, how do you say, like the program and connecting the teacher with each other. Like, I really appreciated the work that they made. And well, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Also, I think Vero wanted to, to answer this question. Yeah, um, I wanted to say that during the pandemic that we adopted this methodology of taking classes online. I wasn't very fond of it, like I like it, but I needed the connection with people. I needed to watch my professor in the classroom so I can retain the knowledge that I was being, um, that they were teaching me, right? But then we had this coil experience and I found that connection with these other students that are from other country, but it's because I am curious and it doesn't matter if I don't have them in front of me, it's just the connection that we always going to have by being just simply human and sharing our thoughts and our beliefs and whatever we think about life is what makes us connect with people and what's really important and this entire culture uh, the country that we come from etc so i think the cold experience really helped me to um be more open to learning through this method through online learning and help me understand that this is a great method to not only learn but to connect with other peoples around the globe Thank you, Veronica. So the next question, um, Vivi kind of started us off already. So I wanted to ask the rest of the panelists, and if you have an answer, you could go ahead and raise your hand. Um, how has your COIO virtual exchange experience helped you 
to better understand what you want to pursue in the future. So has it helped shape a little bit of that or has some of your mindsets changed about what you would like to study? Um, anybody want to jump on that question for me? Use the raise hand feature or just unmute. All right, Aria, yep. So in my case, like that was my you know first semester of my first uh, you know first semester of my college life. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor like throughout my life. I was like I'm gonna be a doctor, never matter whatever comes in my way. So engineering wasn't something that I thought, even though I loved physics and max, but it was like all on a sudden right before my application. I was like, okay, I'm going for the mechanical engineering. Um, and I took mechanical engineering. My brother's also mechanical engineering. He, he would always tell me like the global perspective of engineering. You know how a person's act will affect like people around the world and the fun that you get from it, especially mechanical engineering is a male dominated field, but I would say it's really, it's a really great field because they're so helpful everywhere you go. And also like the professors were so nice. Uh, the concept for me, like the, just the concept for engineering was more broadened by the professors there, like how they push pressure a lot on the ethical side of it. Uh, also, the professor from the Mexico, you know, how he was very understandable to the students, like, even if you can't turn in a project, you tell him the reason, You're like, I can surely understand you. And whenever you want to talk to him, right, like 10 p.m., you test a message, he would reply. And I was like, grateful to see that. I'm like, oh, I had never had something like that in my high school. You send a message, you get maybe after two weeks, I don't know. But so this was great. And that made me to love engineering more. So I told my friend, like, I think I do something that's good. Like, uh, I want to stick on with it. It's funny, it's like it taught you to double down on your immediate choice, which is amazing. Um, I absolutely love that. <laughs> Anybody else want to add to this question before I pass it back over? Yes, Maria. Uh, I think Eddie wanted to answer first, but I don't oh, know. Oh, Eddie, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> uh, you, you can go first, Maria. Okay, thank Eddie. you. Um, it, yeah, it kind of puts a pause on the things that you are completely sure of. Like we all want, like uh, Aria said, we all want like things so quickly and we never kind of like take a step back to think because we think we have all figured it out. Like we as young people, of course, want everything now. We are like very, we don't have patience and this experiences uh, as I said, teach you a lot about yourself, but also like sometimes you don't only have to do one thing and you don't only have to like, you know, just accept this one dream that you have or like I think that your other dreams are like too big, for example. In my perspective, I've always been educated in a multicultural uh, kind of like space because um, my parents and my grandfathers uh, come from like very different cultures um, and I always knew that I wanted that for like my friends and other people but I was like you know if you're not born in a multicultural space then you can have it and that's it and with this experience of coil it was like no yes of course I can have like I can give this to other people like people should have this opportunity not only because it was like uh, given to them but like because they get to be like part of like this experience and they get the offer so now it's not only this experience should like get to you but you can offer this experience so with me it was the fact that I didn't want the experience to die like in that moment that I wanted to take it like as farther as I could go. And that's why I joined like a lot of volunteering uh, exchanges programs. And that's where I'm starting. So like, that's the spark that I was talking about. And you don't have to settle with only one dream or only one degree or only one bachelor. If you wanna do something completely different than you're already doing right now, it's okay. And it's gonna make you a better person. Thank you, Eddie, jump on in. Um, so right now my major is uh, accounting, but I always wanted a major minor in uh, social work. And uh, the reason for that is because I wanted to get to know people from all over the world and help them with their problems because I'm good at helping people with their problems. And it would help me like experience other things 
And that's exactly what the coil did for me was getting to know other people from other places and what they're doing and like how everything is going. And uh, even now I would, I volunteer a lot. Like I'm not trying to brag or anything, but like I'm only 18, but I volunteered like a lot. Like I think I have like 400 or 500 hours of community service and stuff like that. And during that, like volunteering, um, I meet people from all over the world, El Salvador, Honduras, Haiti. And like, they tell me all these stories about different things. And it's just like really nice to hear everything like they've done, everything they've accomplished and everything, every bad thing they've been through. And uh, it's been like really nice. Um, right now, it's like, I was, I was thinking about minoring in social work but you know my one of my older mentors who's not in the school and stuff like that told me more about it and to think about it first because it's there's a lot that goes with social work and it could be stressful and all that stuff but you know there's other ways I could help as an accountant I could be you know do people's taxes for free and stuff like that and um no yeah it's really nice to just that like the coil experience really helped me gain more knowledge about what everything everyone's been up like been through and stuff like that and hopefully I continue with that even in my 30s 40s or 60s and so so yeah thank you for sharing yeah so we were talking also about social change so we will move to to this part of the of the session and I want to mention that we acknowledge the importance of working on diverse teams to foster global learning. And from Professor Marinos from FIU, uh, contribution in the new book, The Guide to Call Virtual Exchange, we can confirm that matching students who might be cult culturally similar but geographically different may provide the context for developing a sense of belonging therefore greater motivation and engagement so here is my next question could you share how your experience collaborating with a diverse team was did discovering sim similarities or commonalities with your peers help you to feel more comfortable and engaged in the activities i think Nick nikki had to leave the session she wanted to ask to answer this so she left um, a comment in the chat, but also Maria. Maria, would you like to to add to this question? Yeah, um, this comes in hand with what Veronica said before. In our program, our teacher that is actually here um, made a program that it's called Voces Invisibles, which is uh, the Invisible Voices, and with this program we kind of like you know we got into it knowing that the students were in another country in another culture and there were probably going to be a lot of differences and we wanted to find that common ground that you know made us stand by each other by each other and what we learned is that in the end we all want to be heard we all want to tell our stories we all want to like feel that connection with other people. And COIL was giving us that experience without us really knowing why. Like we, we didn't really expect it. And we found that here in Venezuela, there were like uh, some things that were going on, but in New York, they, will, they also had like this uh, project where they were like tearing down uh, trees and the, the animals that live in the area were like getting left without a home and here we had the 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 zoo uh place that was like having animals in very like bad situations so we kind of found that common ground and that we wanted to act on it and it was that thing of like we wanted to tell our story from Venezuela but they also wanted to tell their story from New York and it was like, of course, very different situations, but the thing is that we wanted to act on it. And that's the common ground that we had. And that 
kind of sparked again passion between us because we were like no we're not gonna let this go as students we want this to change and we want our voice heard and we're gonna help each other let our voices be heard so that was the most important like common ground that we found and that it actually like helped us a lot with the whole program. Thank you, Maria. And before moving to the next question, I would like to read Nikki's uh, answer. Uh, so she said, allow us to move science out of a dominant lens and expectation and forces us uh, into practicing group collaboration. Social change, and social justice in biology can seem so broad and big that it, it feels difficult to know what change to make. What I've learned in my work is that it comes out of a self-reflection and a choice to take a step back and think about my privileges and how I can relate to others. That in turn help us to take action that challenge their the dominant system. I don't have my glasses on and I don't have it here, so I'm sorry. Why can we write scientific paper in a different language than English? How do we prevent ourselves from doing parachute science? What does it look like when we think about practicing science when it in relation with the, to the local communities within a study? So I think her answer is really like for us to, to think about, for example, doing research in, in, in another language than English. So thank you, Nikki. You are not here now, but thank you so much for your answer. Yes. Um, and I think it's just a great way to have us start to rethink some of the things that we consider to be norms. And I think that's one of the things that COIL really allows us to do is to make the ordinary things that we do every day a little strange. And that's from my sociology hat. So I'm just gonna <laughs> put that out there. Um, so our next question is really looking at some of research around virtual exchange. And one of those is Professor Marino's research that suggests matching students with a similar ethnic or racial background may contribute to the promotion of social justice. So an example that was shared is US Hispanic students expressed a feeling that their presence counted more when they coiled with students in Latin America. Um, for anyone in the room, and I'll start with Vivi, did this apply to your experience? Yes, it actually, it had because uh, we partnered up with UC Davis University and the main demographic for them is uh, Spanish heritage. So. At first, uh, I was talking to my friends, like we were so nervous because of the language. We don't practice English regularly and we were nervous. And the first session uh, we had two, two students, two colleagues, and they told us like, if you want to talk in English, that's fine. But if you can say something or, or you can think, it's okay if you want to talk in Spanish too. We can understand that and I'm sure we can make it work. And going from that point, it was like, like we could breathe and everything went out smooth, and smoother and easier. And the topic about our COIL experience was about comparing our educational systems in high school. So obviously uh, with that connection of our heritage and our language, we were like, oh, I did this in high school, but she did that and in the US is like that. So there were some things that they were like, okay, this is not okay for our heritage or okay, this is not okay for social justice. So it really sparked this conversation about what things we're doing in education, especially in such a sensitive age that is uh, the teen years, that it could be improved. And I really think it was uh, really, beneficial for us having this link between us and we are as Latin have this warm feeling and it was like we were protecting us in a way so yes awesome thank you um I'm actually going to pick on Eddie um for this question as well because I would love to hear your perspective 
on did you feel like that what was shared in the research applied to your experience being able to tap back into speaking Spanish a little bit more and practicing uh, some of your native tongue in an in, in educational space? Uh, yeah, it was really it was really nice to just get that experience. And uh, as I said before, my Spanish isn't the strongest, but just speaking more Spanish is like it really helped me uh, to just know words that I don't know. And sometimes in English, the words, when you translate them in Spanish, it's just this whole word you just don't know. And it's pretty ridiculous. But no, I like um, speaking with other, you know, Latin students or Hispanic students just like me, because sometimes they have similar stories to mine and other times they have different stories to mine. But, you know, speaking to my own people, is it's really nice. And I'm pretty sure everyone feels the same way people into but speaking to others is great too. It's always good to have friends of whatever place, and um, it's it's really nice. And um, I'm pretty sure my other friends could say the same. Having Hispanic friends, Black friends, White friends, it's all great. It doesn't really, but having your people to speak to, it's great. It's really great. Like it's people who understand you, because obviously, when somebody says they're going through something and you're not like they're a different race, you don't you don't understand what they're going through. But if I were to tell like another Hispanic, like, oh, you know, sometimes my parents work hard and yada, yada, they're not always home. They're going to be like, oh, I completely understand you. My parents are the same way. So it's really nice to just have your people. But it, overall, it's it's great to just have anybody, someone who you can always talk to. But the experience is always great. It's been really helpful for me since I love talking to people all the time and helping them out. Thank you so much, Eddie. I absolutely love that. The sharing of like how affirming it is to like speak with your own people. I think that is a very interesting and very poignant um, addition to that conversation. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to Gabby because I think you're on to the next question. And the final question before we get to the audience. So audience members, if you have any questions, start thinking about them now. Um, you can wait till we answer the last questions to put it in the chat or you can put it in the chat now if you're anything like me, you have like five in your head. Um, so if you wanna start putting them in the chat now and I'll get to it when we get to the audience section. All right, Gabriela. Thank you, Abby. So the last question will be also related to social change. And it is, uh, how does an international experience like call virtual exchange impact on engaging in social, social change? How do you think this benefits the community? So Avery, would you like to answer this? Um, yeah, so COIL allows students from different cultures around the world to, I said this before, but it lets them share their experiences and it like promotes cultural diffusion. And it, I guess it allows um, students to, understand the things that happen in other countries and then they can relate that to what happens in their own country say like in america if there's a protest the response to that protest versus in venezuela or in mexico or in india or like the response to a protest in those countries that it may be vastly different or it could be vastly similar but we wouldn't necessarily know that unless we have coil there to open the door for us to understand that. And um, as we gain new ideas from other, our peers in other countries, it allows us to, I guess, institute them within our own society, within our own conversations on our own campuses. And that lets us begin to either make changes or to learn from mistakes or prepare for like the future, I guess. Thank you, Avery. I think Veronica is next. Yes. Well, I think not only the COIL program or the COIL experience helps to benefit the community or make that social, social change happen, I think every intercultural exchange 
um, sparks, ignites this sense of helping others or wanting to make things better for others and for ourselves. Um, I had many experiences with people from Ecuador, Colombia, the United States, um, from Italy, and learning what they have and what, what we don't have. Um, it's always sparks this sense of wanting to know why. And when you want to know why this thing is like that or where things are the way they are, um, then the, you start to understand why things are happening or why we're different in so many ways. But it's in that moment when we are able to connect and to understand our realities and how we can help others to overcome the difficulties that they have or that we have. Um, for example, I remember, this is a very lame example, but <laughs> in Italy, they have a lot of um, trains to move around the country. And a lot of countries have this method of transportation, but we don't have it. So my dad is geographist, and when I came back, um, I asked him why didn't we have this method of transportation because it was easier, it was cheaper for people to move around, for maybe help others to get food or whatever they needed easily, right, and cheaper. Um, and he taught me, so he taught me about our, um, like the way the ground here in Venezuela, I don't know if the ground is the right word, but um, we have a lot of lakes. So building this method of transportation is really hard. So I started thinking about ways um, or other methods of transportation that we could use to help other people to get the food that they need, to get the resources that they are uh, needing. So if we have these exchanges, that let us know what we don't have and what we're missing or what we do have and what we need to appreciate is what makes the difference. Thank you. Thank you. Very it's important to uh, always like, ask us why of we are seeing stuff or living this stuff, right? So Maria, go ahead. Yeah, um, to add a little bit to what Veronica said, I think the biggest impact that COIL in a specific offers is empathy. Once you get into that, you know, virtual exchange and you get to know those people, you understand them, you understand that they're other human beings and they're just like you. This could be your own situation. You could be going through this. So you become friends and of course, friends wanna help friends. So. I think the biggest impact is that because we want to help other people because we are sharing a classroom and we are seeing like them struggle, we want to educate ourselves. Like Veronica said, we want to know why. We want to know what we can do about all of these things, how we can like help them. And usually the, the, the start for like change is a conversation starter doing things like this, reunite, uh, meeting with other people and, you know, talking about the problem and talking about how programs like this start being the, the first step to a solution. So I think that's the biggest impact and that's the biggest, um, you know, contribution they can give the community is the fact that you put you can place this idea of your in your head where like things can be better and I can be part of that change how am I going to better myself individually to be part of that change how can I be part of this so I think that's the biggest um you know contribution you could do to any community you know, question yourself, getting out of your comfort zone and being reflexive and being like, I can change, I can be part of that change. I have power to, my voice isn't really invisible and I can use it for this. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Aria. I just want to add that COIL is like the most affordable way 
to have a national uh, experience because there are international transfer programs, but there you might have a problem with the cost, the expense that you had to face. Here, you can know much better about a country, even though it's virtual, it could give you like a time to take a decision where you want to go to have an international experience in that country. So I think this is like the most affordable way to have a cross-cultural relation. Thank you. Susie? Okay. I wanted to share my experience because I think that uh, it has similarities with something that Maria said that we have to have empathy because uh, as Bibi said, we had a collaboration with UC Davis that is mostly more Hispanic people. And we live in the Northern part of Mexico. So we're really close to the American culture. So at the beginning, I, I thought that I knew a lot of the experiences that they might have, but one of my teammates, uh, well, he was born in the United States, but his parents were from Mexico. And something that impacted me was that he said that sometimes he, he didn't feel like he fit it in either the American culture or the Latin culture, because when he went to Mexico, like his family, uh, he didn't want to speak Spanish, Spanish because he didn't feel comfortable and like, I, I feel the same, I feel like I feel the same as he did, but with English, like as he didn't feel comfortable speaking Spanish, even though that he could, uh, I didn't feel comfortable speaking English. And also he said that when he went to Mexico, uh, he feel like left out because since he didn't speak Spanish, some of her family members, and make fun of him and call him the no sabo kid. And I don't know, like that made me realize that we also have to change that. Like there are things that you think you know, but there are completely different when you know and speak to other people. Thank you, Susie. Uh, I have to tell you that I'm, I'm speechless. I have a lot of my head in my head and I want to share but this is the space for you students and I really love all your answers and what you have sharing and the conversation how's, uh, how's going but we also have some questions from the audience so um, Abby would you like to help me with the questions? Sure so the first question I saw was what advice or recommendations would you provide to faculty to encourage more students' participation and commitment? So what was it that your teacher told you about this experience that kind of made you feel more comfortable or encouraged you to continue on with this collaboration? Yes, Maria. Um, this go back. This goes back to the program that our teacher created. I think uh, being like creative in the way we like kind of like shape the program because one of the first things that our teacher Jose Luis told us is that the name of the program was going to be Invisible Voices, and this was the only like one of the only uh, opportunities that we as students in Venezuela would have to tell our story and to be heard. And that kind of like sparked that, you know, um, necessity of like telling our story and mm -hmm. being like, this is not an opportunity that's gonna be presented to you always. Um, it's once in a lifetime kind of thing sometimes. And it can give you so much if you let the opportunity, if you grab the opportunity. So for us or for me personally what inspired me and what really made me commit to to the program was the fact that we had this story that we always wanted to tell venezuelans we always want people to know what's happening in venezuela because nobody does mm -hmm. nobody really knows like people talk a lot about venezuela but they don't really know what entails they don't really know what we are going through so we wanted to share that experience. And we finally had a place where we could. 
So it was like, you know, it was like you take the opportunity and you make it worth it or you don't and you miss the chance. So I think the program and the shaping of the program was the most important thing for me. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else want to add anything that your professor said that was like a motivator for you to keep going? Yeah, Arya. So for me, I would say it was about the connections because as a college student, you're pretty much making an international connection with other students. And also another aspect about like what an ethics looks from different perspectives of the, around the world. So that was the two things that led me to stay on with the COIT program to understand more about the culture, you know, how they would figure the ethics as. Awesome, thank you. So I'll go to the next question from the audience and that was, what would you recommend to students who will do COYO in another language for the first time? So um, I think I would like to ask Avery, can you kick us off with that answer? Because you talked a little bit about your experience um, not being a Spanish speaker um, and going into this experience, having to kind of learn a little bit about it. Um, I did, I, I'm not gonna say I spoke Spanish like fluently, or that I could maintain a conversation, but I at least knew how to say like, hello, like hola, or I'd say good morning, like buenos dias. But um, through COIL, I found myself wanting to actually communicate and not just communicate through Eddie all the time, because that wasn't always fair to him. And so I would try to go on Google Translate, which was not always the most successful thing to do. Um, to like find out how to say different words or different phrases or to translate the names of movies. But it, that act there, the fact that I wanted to, that allowed me to, I guess, just really get more invested in the idea of, well, more so it made me want to understand my partner in Venezuela more, our partner in Venezuela. And then when Eddie would translate it, I would ask him, what does that mean? Because I wanted to know what that meant. All right, I wouldn't always do that, but at the times I did. Like, and that, it really does, in just like for a student who doesn't speak the language, just try to, try to communicate with your other partner in their other language, so that, in their language, so that you can both have a stronger common ground. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Maria, I think your hand went up again to this question. Actually, there's two others, Vivi and Laura. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, Do you want to, Vivi, where are you? I can't find you right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. Okay. So, what I will recommend, uh, speaking from experience, is to acknowledge that it's a really brave move to communicate with someone, especially in academic, um, in an academic scenario. So first of all, to just acknowledge and how brave you are and that you got this. The second thing that I truly recommend and firmly believe is that feeling weak, uh, feeling nervous is never a weakness. So you can express that. You can say to someone. I'm feeling nervous and that's going to bring empathy to you. And it's also going to make them feel like, oh, maybe I can help her. Like she's also human. We're going to humanize this soul connection that we're having virtually. So if you're feeling nervous, it's not a weakness. You can always express it and you're going to feel like, ah, like everything's better. And also about just what Avery was telling about Google Translator, it's, <laughs> it's helpful. Sometimes when we were talking, we obviously have very different accents. So it was pretty useful to just, if it was like long paragraphs, maybe try to write them. So if you don't understand quite something, you can just like, oh, okay, look it up and just try to keep that communication going. Don't let the language be a barrier. You can always overpass it if you have the confidence and if you have the right communication tools, you're gonna get it. Okay, I'm gonna help Abby here because I know she's using the, the her phone and it's a little bit difficult. So uh, we also have Aria. 
So for someone who's going to pursue this client program, I would say you should be ready to break yourself because there's a lot of your thoughts, your opinions that's going to change. Um, your teamwork, your patience, as Nicole, you know, she's already told, like you need to have a great patience to work in this field. But there's a great opportunity that you're going to get from it because you're making these national connections. Yeah, more, knowing more about other countries um, and also building a great teamwork that would go to your resume for sure. And I would recommend like you should be ready to break yourself. Thank you, and uh, Maria. Yeah, um, kind of like adding to what my other mates told is make the most of it. Like you don't know what, when this opportunity is going to show up again. So don't be shy to make questions. Don't be shy to like be curious because usually, as we said, we want to talk about like what we're going through. So if you're curious about something, if you want to know what something means, then ask. Never like it's better to like be nervous and like kind of like uncomfortable about it then later then be like regretful that you didn't make the question that you didn't learn what you wanted to learn also like if you're the person that's talking in another language as viviana said be confident about it uh trying to communicate with the with your teammates and be like hey i'm really nervous it's my first time doing this um or like any situation that can make you uncomfortable, it's like pretty necessary that you have very good communication because it's your teamwork that's gonna make the whole difference. And if you're on the other side, try to put yourself on the shoes of your like teammate and be like, if it were the other way around and I was, you know, the one that had to talk in another language where I was not totally comfortable with um, then we should probably like try to avoid judge the mental like uh, you know phrases or words even if we're like joking um, you know try to be like understanding of the other person's feelings and try to be like yeah have good communication and try to be nice about everything thank you Marianne also we have uh, Avery again um, yeah, I would wanted to respond to Giselle's question. Mm -hmm. I don't think you guys already did that. No, go ahead, Avery. Okay. Um, sorry, I just have to find it again. It said, what advice or recommendations would you provide faculty to encourage participation and commitment? Um, just like having activities between the students that allow them to share their experiences, something that we've all been saying, I guess, sharing the experiences that is important, but um, just like, so that way they can uh, understand, I guess, each other more. They can know where their collaborators are coming from. And that lets them, like I said before, have a stronger common ground. And uh, yeah, that would be that would be about it. Just like sharing experiences, keeping them engaged, having like open conversations with the students and the other faculty, and just actually opening the board for the students to come up with ideas or conversations or topics that they want to talk about and discuss. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. I, I want to ask this question and I'm going to change it a little bit. So um, the person that asks, I apologize, but um, one of the questions says, what would you say are best ways of encouraging students who are shy to communicate with other students in COIL projects or to participate freely? And I know that a lot of you have already commented on, you know, students need to come at this willing to change, willing to like break themselves and, and to recognize that they're gonna come out of this experience differently. What were some of the things that your instructors or your professors told you that helped you to kind of get there um, or made you a little more comfortable with that discomfort? Um, I hope that makes a little sense. <laughs> Maria. 
So I would say from my personal experience to have this confidence to talk, the best thing is to think about the regrets because if you are not going to turn today, when you turn all, you'll be like, oh my God, I missed all those opportunities. At the end of the day, we are just talking to human beings itself. So especially when you are doing the COIL program, you should keep that in your mind. They are also students. So we are pretty much in the same level. There's nothing to be scared of. We all are here to learn something or on the same stage. So always feel confident. Like, you know, we are the same. Then there's no problem talking to each other. Thank you, Arya. Susie. Well, I want to tell something that Gabby told us because we were like nervous about having this experience because it was going to be in English. And I think Vivi said before also, but sometimes we don't feel comfortable speaking English because it is not our first language and we don't practice that much. And I feel like maybe a lot of students that the native language is in English feel the same way because we judge ourselves too much. Like we want to speak a perfect English and have a perfect pronunciation and everything. And something that Gabby told us was that don't be afraid and to have an accent. The important, like you will learn more and having these opportunities and you just have to communicate with each other. You don't have to speak perfect English. And that's also that I have noticed with native speakers because sometimes I don't want to speak English with native speakers, but I noticed that they are, they are always encourage you to keep speaking because they say like, oh, well, I'm impressed that you can speak another language I only speak one, and that's something that made me feel comfortable. And not only Gabby, but also the students, because once you show your vulnerability, and you can like we connect with each other more. Thank you, Susie, for sharing this. And we are about to finish. We are almost at uh, the. Uh, the time to finish we have three minutes but we can hear from maria and then we will close up the session i wanted to talk about uh one of the things that our teacher did um we collaborated with a university in new york and both teachers first got into a meeting that they filmed and they explained the whole program to us they presented themselves they told us that they were friends, like they showed us the connection that they could have through the call uh, program, which was very helpful. And it was very endearing because we wanted to have that as well. And we also had like a Facebook group where we all presented ourselves, like we all introduced ourselves, told um, the other students about us, what we like to do. Uh, we put up a picture of us, who we wanted to like be, what we wanted to achieve with the program. So when the actual meeting got to to be actually like done, we didn't feel as much of a, a strangers. Like we kind of like already knew their faces. We already knew they like Linkin Park or something. Like we already knew a little bit about them. So it didn't felt like we were completely strangers. We actually felt like kind of friends. So the next part of the connection was our job. Thank you, Maria. And I saw some sad faces, I know, because this is uh, our last question. And we are really happy to um, have the opportunity of listening to, to our students because we don't have the, the, these kind of opportunities uh, frequently. So thank you all for being here. Um, thank you to all the students for um, their willingness to participate and hope, Abby, would you like to say something else? <laughs> I'd just, just love to ask everybody if they would take their, um, if we could just see everybody on camera and we'll take a couple pictures because this is just such a wonderful opportunity. And um, Abby, I want to give you the, last word so i'm just going to take a couple shots as you talk 
okay, uh, that's going to be a very interesting image as I move my mouth a lot. Um, I am so happy and excited to have had this conversation with all of you students. Um, one of the things that Gabrielle's, Gabriella said earlier was, you're the most important group of people that we want to work with um, with this experience. And it's just affirming for us as instructors as well to hear that some of the goals that we set in terms of learning goals and all of the things that we do in the background when we're developing these COIL um, virtual exchange collaborations, so many of you hit on like many of the learning goals that I know I implemented in my COIL experience with my students. And I'm sure your professors had on their list of things to make sure that you gained out of this experience. So I just want to say thank you so much for being open. Um, thank you so much for continuing to do this work. And I do believe that, you know, the future, the future is global. And I hope that we all work together um, to really make substantial social change in our world, um, because it's students like you that will make sure that we get there. Um, so thank you again so much. Continue to do the amazing work from accounting to engineering. Um, just phenomenal. Thank you. Yay, everybody take your mic off and give the students a round of applause and thanks and yay. <laughs> Bravo. Yay. Wonderful. Good job, everybody. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And keep going doing coil and spreading the good word. Yay. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Have Thanks. a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is from Brazil. Yay. Thank you, Maya. Luca, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Yay.